Hey guys, welcome back. Erectile dysfunction is an embarrassing phenomenon that impacts up to 30% of American males. In today's show, we're going to talk about a newly emerging biomarker that's associated with both erectile dysfunction and cardiovascular disease known as ApoB. We've talked about ApoB a lot. Apolipoprotein B is found on every one of your atherogenic lipoproteins, your VLDLs, your IDLs, and also your LDLs or bad cholesterol, as well as LP little a. So, it's much better and more accurate and sensitive and specific to replace your standard cholesterol measurements with ApoB to A1 ratios. Now, as the title of this paper found, the indicative effects of apolipoprotein B on organic erectile dysfunction diagnosed by the nocturnal penal tumorescence rigidity test. Okay. I don't know what this rigidity test is, but it has to do with the fact that most men should have an unconscious or non-volitional random erections throughout the night. And it turns out that men with erectile dysfunction have higher levels of ApoB, meaning that apolipoprotein B, when it's out of normal ranges, could initiate the process of atherosclerosis, leading to endothelial dysfunction that is linked with erectile dysfunction. So let's talk more about it. The scientists say erectile dysfunction is closely correlated with cardiovascular disease. Apolipoprotein B, ApoA1, and the ApoA1 to ApoB ratio are predictive indicators of cardiovascular disease. A strong association among these proteins and also endothelial dysfunction, erectile dysfunction, and cardiovascular disease has been particularly demonstrated. In our study, patients with organic erectile dysfunction had considerably lower levels of ApoA1 to ApoB. That is, the ratio of anti-atherogenic lipoproteins to atherogenic lipoproteins was off, suggesting that their endothelium was compromised, leading to erectile dysfunction. And so we're going to talk a little bit more about that. So the scientists say that involuntary occurring nocturnal erections in men with typical erectile function occur between four to six times for every six to eight hours of sleeping. So men, you should naturally be having an erection throughout you know, your sleeping time and not know about it. But in the context of endothelial dysfunction, the random erections don't occur. And so there's this strong correlation between cardiovascular disease and erectile dysfunction. So I know a lot of guys are trying to increase and optimize testosterone. Okay, there's nothing wrong with that because that's going to increase drive and vigor uh, and, and initiating you know, sexual encounters and so forth. But if the endothelium or the cardiovascular system is compromised because because of high levels of atherogenic lipoproteins or oxidizable seed oils in the diet and so on, then that might compromise sexual performance. And the scientists say vascular, endocrine, neurological, and psychological disease are all components of the complex and multifaceted process known as erectile dysfunction. The causes of organic erectile dysfunction often involve pathologies of endothelial dysfunction and atherosclerosis, which are similar to cardiovascular diseases and endothelial disease. Okay, so before we continue on and talk more about the associations with apolipoprotein B and erectile dysfunction, I just want to say thank you for being here. Thanks as always for hitting that like button, leaving me a comment below, and sharing this video as a direct text message with a friend that you care about to help them optimize their cardiovascular health. Because we know that erectile dysfunction is a sign of early cardiovascular disease. So if you're experiencing this, this is a symptom of a much larger problem. And you need to share this with your friends and family so that they can change their lifestyle and their diet and so forth. We've talked a lot about metabolic health before. One tool that can help support metabolic health is berberine hydrochloride, known as the berberine fasting accelerator by Myoscience. This very unique combination of synergistic nutrients, not just berberine hydrochloride, but also alpha-lipoic acid and biotin can be used to help kickstart your fast and help optimize and support and maintain healthy cardiometabolic health. You can take two to three capsules during or after your last meal to help curb some of those evening food cravings and help support metabolic health. Because you know that metabolic health is intimately connected and inextricably linked with cardiovascular disease. So if you have metabolic dysfunction, you're probably going to be more prone to having cardio metabolic health issues. And so we want to help you optimize that. And that's why we formulated the berberine fasting accelerator. I'll put links below my friends. It's a great tool to kickstart your fast and curb those evening food cravings. You can save using the code podcast over at myoscience.com. That's myoscience with an X, M-Y-O-X-C-I-E-N-C-E.com. So let's talk about table two here. This is the association and the correlations with ApoB as a marker of erectile dysfunction. Now, what I thought was quite interesting about this paper, you know, my biases lead me to first look at triglycerides. But interestingly enough, there wasn't a strong correlation with triglyceride elevations and their independent associations with erectile dysfunction. However, if you look here at ApoB, there is a 
p-value of 0.001, a strong statistically significant correlation with high ApoB levels and low ApoA1 levels. Remember, ApoA1, there's one to four ApoA1 uh, particles on your HDL cholesterol. So you want a higher ApoA1 and a lower ApoB. And that ratio is really important. But as you can see here, there's a strong correlation with an elevated ApoB and erectile dysfunction, which I think is quite fascinating. They also looked at hormone levels and found no correlation with testosterone and erectile dysfunction. I want to say that again, that's really important. I think a lot of people think, oh, I'm having problems in the bedroom. It must be my testosterone. It's more likely underlying cardiovascular disease, high blood pressure, endothelial dysfunction, and therefore erectile dysfunction. And so what they found is that the ApoB to A1 ratio, when it's closer to one, that is more problematic. I do think that this is really important, and that's why I think it's very important to focus on ApoB and ApoA1 as opposed to just looking at LDL cholesterol. But there's a strong correlation here between the ratio of your anti-atherogenic lipoproteins like HDL and the levels of the atherogenic lipoproteins like ApoB and IDL and LP little a. So you can see here is that ratio favors more atherogenic lipoproteins. There is a stronger connection with erectile dysfunction. So that's really important as well. Now, what's interesting, but this wasn't statistically significant, is the relatively high levels of LP little a in the group that had erectile dysfunction compared to the other group. And I think that is quite interesting because evidence suggests that LP little a is an oxidized LDL. And so that was noted here. But suffice it to say, there is a, a strong correlation with high ApoB and erectile dysfunction and cardiovascular risk. So the scientists say, we know that erectile dysfunction and cardiovascular disease share several common risk factors. We know that erectile dysfunction has a substantial influence on patients' quality of life. It is crucial to examine the functions of ApoB, ApoA1, and the ApoA1 to ApoB ratio in the diagnosis of organic erectile dysfunction, since these lipid prole markers have diagnostic significance for both cardiovascular disease and erectile dysfunction. Our research revealed that patients with organic ED, erectile dysfunction, have considerably lower estrogen levels. This is, I think, quite interesting because a lot of people are on Arimidex and estrogen blockers. So it's helpful to recognize, my friends, that estrogen is not always bad. And that, you know that I promote the use of DHEA to help support all sorts of hormone levels. And some studies show that there is a mild increase in estrogen as well as testosterone and dihydrotestosterone in men that use DHT. So we shouldn't always be scared of estrogen, but I think that connection between lower estrogen in guys that have erectile dysfunction is quite fascinating. So we know that estrogens play a role in male sexual function, and studies reported that the, that the impact of estrogens on erectile dysfunction has been inconsistent. The results of our study were significantly different from those of previous studies. Our study also found that elevated GGT levels were dramatically increased in the high-risk vascular group. Remember, we've talked a lot about GGT. This is one of your amino transferase enzymes that is released from your liver when you start to get metabolically unhealthy and your liver accumulates fat. AST, ALT, and GGT start to increase. I've talked a lot about GGT and the correlations with persistent organic pollutant exposure and the research out of South Korea showing high correlations with elevations in GGT above 30. It's units per liter, and that is correlated with heart disease and also exposure to these toxins. And that's why N-acetylcysteine glycine are very important. But this study found a correlation here with high GGT levels and the high risk vascular group. And so I think this is really important and the scientists say it's, it's worth noting, it's worth talking about. So in conclusion, our research has shown that the NPTR test, which is a nocturnal erection test, is effective in diagnosing organic erectile dysfunction and psychogenic erectile dysfunction. Organic ED is associated with decreased serum levels of ApoA1 and a decreased level of ApoA1 to ApoB ratio, as well as elevated levels of ApoB, but psychogenic ED is not. So they're different pathologically. You know, we know that the mind can also impact erection function and, and quality and so forth, but there is a, a physiologic difference here. So these findings imply that ApoA1 to ApoA1 to ApoB ratios are serum indicators for the risk of organic erectile dysfunction and have utility and are crucial in the ideology of erectile dysfunction. The general population's ApoA1 to ApoA1 and ApoB ratio levels can help be a promising technique for identifying people with organic erectile dysfunction. So I think it's important. Next time you go to your doctor, monitor this. This is a $17 
test. There's no reason why you shouldn't have your ApoA1 and ApoB ratios as well as your total ApoB levels. Really much more sensitive, specific than just total LDL cholesterol because it's actually looking at all of the atherogenic lipoproteins, your LP little a, your LDL, your IDL, and your VLDL and remnants. Really important stuff. And if this is out of whack, then it could be predisposing you to cardiovascular disease, a symptom of which would be erectile dysfunction. So hopefully you enjoy this video. Thanks again for sharing this, for hitting that like button. And I'll link the research that we talked about in the description below. We'll catch you on a future one down the road. Bye now.